Sorry about the delay at the beginning of these videos. Okay, so we're going to look at two examples of geometric series. First up, we have 2 plus 2 thirds plus 2 ninths plus 2 over 27 and on forever. We got to figure out why is it a geometric series? Uh, does it converge or diverge? Uh, if it converges, what does it converge to? Okay. So, uh, is it a geometric series? What is a geometric series? It's a series where each term can be arrived at from the previous term by multiplying by a common ratio. What do you multiply 2 by to get 2 thirds? It's 1 third. What do you multiply 2 thirds by to get 2 ninths? 1 third. What do you multiply 2 ninths by to get 2 over 27? One third. So what we have is a geometric series and we have a ratio R which is one third. Uh, the first term, uh, that's a two. How do we know whether the geometric series converges or diverges? It's based on the value of R. If the absolute value of R is less than one, the series will converge. Even more than that, we know what the series converges to. It converges to a sum that is the ratio, uh, that is the fraction um, a over 1 minus r. It's, it's the first term over 1 minus the ratio. Okay, well, let's do it. Well, then uh, 1 third is less than 1 in absolute value, so it fits. Plug in a equals 2. Plug in r equals 1 third. Your denominator is going to be 2 thirds. Instead of dividing by two thirds, we're going to multiply by three halves. The twos cancel out. The sum of adding up these infinitely many numbers is three. If you start with two and you add two thirds and add two ninths and add two over 27 forever, forever, you arrive at three. That's our first example of a geometric series. Let's see another. 3 over e minus 9 over e squared plus 27 over e cubed minus 81 over e to the fourth and so on. This time we don't have a general term. We don't have the summation. But that's okay. Is it a geometric series? How do we know? And if it is, what, what does it do? Does it converge or diverge? Uh, if it converges, like what does it converge to? How do you get from one term to the next? Is it by multiplying by a common ratio? How do you get from 3 over e into negative 9 over e squared? What did you multiply by? A, a negative 3 over e. Check it with the next one. How do you get from negative 9 over e squared to 27 over e cubed? What do you multiply by? A negative 3 over e. And so, common ratio, negative 3 over e. And we have to decide whether that ratio is less than 1 in absolute value. The absolute value of negative 3 over e is 3 over e. We need to know how e compares to 3. There's some constants that you need to know. The first few decimals, like you know that pi is 3.14 and then it goes on forever and never terminates, never repeats. e, we need to know that as much as we know pi. Okay, and so what e is... The first part of the decimal expansion on E is 2.71828. It goes on forever. It doesn't repeat. Um, it isn't, it's less than three. Okay. You're dividing three by something less than three. Is that going to be bigger than one or less than one? That's what we need to know. Dividing three by something less than three is greater than one. Well, if your ratio is greater than 1 in absolute value, we know that the geometric series diverges. So we did it. Right? So that's two quick examples. Um, so that the video doesn't get too long, we'll, we'll ha have another video for another example.